Dr. Sid, thank you so much for meeting with us at the Arbo 2017 meeting. It's my pleasure. You had a presentation about the effects of nitarsidol on aqueous humor dynamics in humans. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Absolutely. So nitarsidol is, is a novel uh, compound for treatment of glaucoma. And um, it's, a, it's a combination of a rho kinase inhibitor and norepinephrine transport a mechanism. And there have been previous animal studies looking at the mechanism of action, so there may be some effect on alpha facility, it may affect uh, episcopal venous pressure, and it may affect also um, aqueous humor production rate. So, so this was the first study to, to look at uh, the mechanism of action of nitarsidol in, in humans. And uh, our study was a, a randomized controlled trial in normal healthy volunteers. Uh, we studied uh, 10 subjects who were treated with nitarsidol 0.02%. And, and one eye randomized with the other eye with a, contra with a placebo control uh, with a vehicle. And uh, they were dosed for once a day for a week, and then uh, we measured a number of aqueous hemodynamics parameters at baseline, and then again after one week of treatment. And these parameters included intraocular pressure, uh, outflow facility using tonography, episcopal venous pressure using a custom uh, built uh, venal manometer that we designed at Mayo Clinic and also uh, aqueous humor of flow rate using fluorophotometry. And when we uh, looked at this data, what we found is that um, there was a significant decrease in intraocular pressure, um, both compared to baseline and compared to placebo, and this was uh, uh, something we would expect. Um, it was, um, it was uh, about four and a half millimeters of mercury uh, in this group. Uh, we also found a significant decrease uh, in, uh, or sorry, significant increase in, um, in outflow facility, and uh, this was uh, again significant compared to baseline as well as compared to the placebo uh, treated eyes, and, and this seemed to account for most of the change in intraocular pressure. But there was also a, a second mechanism, which was a decrease in episcleral venous pressure, and uh, that was about a 9% change. Uh, for at, after one week compared to baseline, and that was uh, statistically significant. We did not find a significant change in the rate of aqueous humor production or uveal scleral flow calculated using the Goldman equation. So, uh, so, what, so what these results show is that uh, uh, some of the mechanisms of action uh, are uh, similar in humans and in animals, but I think more importantly what it shows is that uh, this is really a a different type of medication than what's out there. The, the ability of, of a medication to uh, improve outflow facility by acting on the trabecular meshwork as well as uh, reducing episcleral venous pressure um, is, is really uh, unique. There's nothing like that uh, available right now. Was there anything about this research, uh, any findings that were most surprising or interesting or unexpected to you? Well, I think probably what's most interesting is that um, that there was a change in episcleral venous pressure. So there's been a lot of work and, and, uh, around uh, the rural counties and inhibitors looking at their effect on intrabecular meshwork. So we did expect that we would find a change in alpha facility, which we did find. Um, but to also have a second mechanism where there's a decrease in episcleral venous pressure is very interesting. Um, so that there appear to be multiple mechanisms of action. And it, it seems that this medication acts um, not just on the trabecular meshwork, but also distal to the trabecular meshwork, uh, affecting EVP and possibly affecting uh, uh, outflow facility uh, beyond the Schlems Canal. And this research, it, it seems like it could change the paradigm for treatment you know, that the clinicians are performing. Where do you see this going for the clinician in their daily practice? Well, I, I, there, there hasn't been a new class of glaucoma medication since 1997, so, so we're well overdue for, for a, new ch a new type of glaucoma medication. And this really is um, a new type of glaucoma medication. It, it targets primarily uh, outflow facility and, um, and the ability to, to uh, improve outflow facility not only reduces intraocular pressure, but uh, in principle, we didn't test it in this study, but in principle would reduce ILP fluctuations as well. So it's certainly welcome to have a medication that targets particularly the, the uh, outflow pathway improving outflow facility.